How do you handle the pressure of being a champion? Hey, Jeff Hagee, Daily Success Strategies. Thanks for being with me today. If you're new here, thanks for joining. If you've been here before and you're returning, appreciate you coming back. So right now we're in the middle of the Olympics. They're getting a lot of attention and there's a lot of great things happening. It's been fun to watch. I've been really interested in them this year because I've been able to really pay attention and watch the behind the scenes, really watching the athletes on their preparation, on the things they're doing before they compete. And that's been really interesting for me. And this year, one of the things I was really interested in is some of the confidence levels so high you know, whether you're watching the swimmers, whether you're watching gymnastics, there's such a high level of confidence and understanding of what they're needing to do to win the gold or win the, win a medal of whatever it is. And it's been really fun to watch everything about that. Now, Simone Biles, she shocked the Olympic world on Tuesday when she pulled out of the U S team gymnastics finals But the interesting thing was she said that the emotional Tokyo Olympic Games, not a physical injury, is what prompted her to withdraw. And so I want to talk a little bit about that today. You know, when when this happened, I was anxious to see what Tim Grover would post about it, because in his book, Winning, I've, I've talked a lot about that over the last little while. He's got some great things on winning. And so I want to read what he wrote because he wrote some things that are very specific to what she had to go through. He says, winning sets unreasonable goals and requires you to bear the burden of responsibility for achieving them. That means doing anything and everything possible to get out of the situation you're in and into a position to win. You can pay the price of winning and succeed, or you can quit, stay where you are and pay the price of regret. The road to paradise is a two-way street, and just as quickly as you travel to the top, you can slide right back down. In fact, you pretty much can count on it. Winning doesn't let you hang around. It meets you at the parade, cheers the loudest when you get the trophy, and then escorts you to the parking lot, where the bus that brought you there has a new sign with its next destination, hell. Winning will use every dirty trick in the book and make up new ones just to entertain itself and keep you in hell. It's up to you to find your way out. And so as we look at someone like Simone and she's been at the top for so long and what has drug her down. Now there's another post that I read that I want to add to also on this topic. And it was Todd Herman. And he said, over the last 24 hours, I've had 56 messages from athletes and coaches seeking help at the Olympics. These 2021 games are the mental health nightmare. In the 21 years working with the athletes at the Olympic Games, I've never seen more stress and anxiety. I'm not going to read everything he wrote, but then he also added, the Olympic Games are just a microcosm of society. If you're seeing some of the most mentally tough, focused, and disciplined people on the planet fall prey to pressure, what about the regular Joes and Janes of our society? that don't have the same level of skill at coping with toxic levels of opinion, rhetoric, and hateful commentary online. The antidote is always the same. Be more kind. You know, in his post that he went on that, you know, people that aren't placed and as high as they had hoped, getting messages online from people saying, thanks for letting the country down and stuff like that. Well, the reason I wanted to talk more about this today was, you know, exactly what um, Todd Herman said. If we're seeing the top athletes in the world that have dealt with these things all their life and have learned how to deal with these things and they're falling to this pressure, what about the regular athletes? What about your son or daughter? What about you? This was the reason I started originally putting together the Confident Athlete Program. I put this program together to help on the mental side, the mental game of sports. But a lot of it came from the things that the kids have gone through over the last year and a half through the pandemic and the mental stress that they've gone through and wanting to deal with that 
in players I've worked with in my own family, those athletes, I've watched it at all levels. And so it's something that we need to pay attention to. In fact, in the sixth module of the confident athlete program, my daughter, who was one of those people that dealt with this, I bring her into that with me and we talk about it. We talk about it from her perspective, from my perspective. And it's, I think it's something we really need to pay attention to. So that's one of the things I wanted to talk about today and I want to bring attention to. And, you know, like Todd Herman says, if you follow these athletes on social media, whether it's the Olympics or whether it's a high school kid and they fail, they don't do so well. That text or that tweet or whatever you're sending them can be supportive. It can be, you know, you did your best, good job, those sort of things rather than telling them that you let the country down. But I want to encourage you, if you've got a son, a daughter, or yourself, to have the conversations about where you are with your mindset, where you are mentally, and the things that you need to address. And I'd love you to check out the Confident Athlete program at jeffhagey.com slash confidentathlete, because this is a place that we're bringing things together that yeah, the focus is building your mental game. The focus is building your confidence. It's creating a mindset of winning and being able to succeed. But we also want to address the mental health issues. We also want to address the mental side that you need someone to talk to, whether it's a coach, whether it's a parent, whether it's a teammate. You know, I had a conversation with Coach Rene Lopez a while ago, and I've talked about this before. One of the things that happened through the pandemic is the coaches that did stay in contact a lot with their teams usually did it in group sessions, a Zoom, a group call or whatever. That eliminated a lot of the one-on-one talks that coaches have with athletes. And a lot of times that's where an athlete has an opportunity to open up and confide and talk about things. Those opportunities have been missed. And so Maybe that's all it is. Maybe it needs to be a coach sitting down with athletes and having those conversations, seeing how they're doing. So if this is something you'd like to talk more about, please reach out. Please reach out to me, jeff at jeffhagey.com. You can email me or if you're watching or listening to this in social media, just send me a DM. But love to have more conversations about this and love for you to get yourself, your kids, whatever it is, into our Confident Athlete program, jeffhagey.com slash Confident Athlete. Right now, I've got kids from middle school up to Division One athletes in the program. Love to get more of you involved and really help everyone prepare for their next season. So thanks for being with me. Hope you're having a great week. Stay focused. We'll talk to you again tomorrow.